In this Android development tutorial, we're going to learn how to enable and grant permission for the Google APIs. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so we're going to actually jump into the online Google console and create a new project. Um, uh, select some Google APIs that we want to access, just one in this case, and grant permissions for that particular API so we can access it from our Android application. Okay, if you've been following this tutorial series, the Google API tutorial series, if you go to my website, I do provide free membership, you can click on the link for that. Um, you can get the code from the previous tutorial if you want to just keep in sync from each episode at a time. There are other details of how to get the code, previous code from GitHub. Okay, so we'll move down here. So what we need to do is set up a Google uh, a a project in the Google Developers Console. I have provided a link here on my website or you can just Google search Google Developers Console. So we'll select, click on that. And I will keep my other page open just in case I do need to refer to that. So we'll just jump across here. Okay. You will get taken to a page. The first thing you want to do is create a project. So select create a project because I've deleted all my projects on this particular account. And I'm just going to call this Mo. You can call this whatever you want. I don't think you'll be able to call it what I'm calling it. Um, apps. Okay, so Mo application tutorials, my applications. And so that's telling me what my project's going to be, but you can change your project ID name if you want. And basically, we're just going to select create. And if I move my mouse across the corner here, um, there was a little circle going around just saying notifications. If I click on notifications, it's telling me my project's going to be created. Now, we want to go across to the left hand side here and select manage resources and go back again and now I'm going to select my project so what we want to do here is you want to see a window like this with your new project okay so the next step here is I'm going to scope I want to enable an API it's going to be the YouTube data API so I'm going to select, go across here and select library. And I will probably revisit here in future application developments, but you can see we've got maps. Um, we've got the Google Drive here, we've got email, we've got sheets, and there's a section on YouTube. And I just want to enable the API for the Google YouTube data API version three. So I'm going to select that. and then select enable. Okay, next step here is create, create credential to access that YouTube data API. So you can click on credentials there. I'm just gonna click on this button to the right here, create credentials. Um, you got a selection there. We've only enabled the YouTube data API, so we'll select that. So now, where will you be calling the API from? Android. I'm going to access user data here. Um, the application itself is for the user just to play YouTube videos. So it's just going to access their own account, not so that won't be spread around. And then select what credentials do I need, which seems a little strange, but Google seems to like updating this UI every week or so. So anyway, click that. Um, give our, um, what we're doing is we're creating an OAuth uh, client ID. So we're sort of setting up a secure connection between this API and our Android application. So we'll just give this um, application a name. I'm just going to call it Android YouTube Player. 
Okay, next step here is to create a secure fingerprint ID. Um, you can either go to my website here, and if you're running on a Mac, um, I will provide the default um, command to run that, or else we're just going to follow the instructions here. There's a little copy and paste, select that. Now we'll go into our Android Studio. This can be done from any terminal, but I'm going to use Android Studio Terminal. Okay, I'm going to paste in this. And we need to edit it slightly. We need to edit the path to debug or production key store and replace that. So I'm just going to delete that just to get our key store. So in the Mac, it's tilde forward slash. This is the default. I never change this. And it's just select Android and then debug key store. So that's the command you need to run here. Press enter. We'll ask for a password. For the debug key store, the password's Android. Okay, that's been done. I will comment this out. I don't want you to see my keys, secure keys, but it's just a matter of see the shy one. We want to copy and paste that fingerprint there. Okay, now go back to our Google console and paste that in there. Okay, next step here is asking for your package name. It gives you a hint that you can get it from your android.xml file. So back to Android Studio. Open up our XML file. Android XML file. And up here, I will highlight this. You can see the, my package name, com.mobitops.google api authenticator. Okay, now let's go back to here and I'm going to paste this in here I just want to change this Android slightly because I'm going to be creating two applications that are going to be accessing this particular um, YouTube API I've got two, two tutorial series for this so this one here I'm just going to call authenticator you can see I never want any spelling um, Competitions Authenticator, Authenticator um, App, Authenticator App. Okay, now we can select Create Client ID. Okay, that's all we need to do at this stage. We don't need to download the credentials or anything like that, not for this particular application, so we can just select Done. And that's now completed. We've now successfully created a client ID, an OAuth client ID, where our application we're currently working on will now be able to access the YouTube data API. And so this is just part of the authentication process to be able to access this. We will have to do a bit more work in our Android application itself, which will happen in the following tutorial. Anyway, if you want to get notified of the tutorials I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. If you want access to all the episodes in this particular tutorial series, you will need to sign up for the professional membership plan for $10 a month. Or else there is a free YouTube membership plan as well, and that just gives you access to the documentation to this tutorial. Anyway, thank you for taking the time for watching this one. Bye for now.